Hello, it's Tom from Backtail Studio, and it is time for an apocalypse game. It's been a little while, but we're me and Dom are really looking forward to this one. It's going to be our normal matchup of uh, Black Templars versus Word Bearers um, and Demons, I think. Uh, so now, just to give a little bit of uh, insight into this, we were going to up our points. So I think we had the ten thousand point game last time, um, so we were planning on doing about eleven thousand five hundred. However, as we were both making our lists, we've noticed that the point changes have really given us more things in our armies than we uh was within the um last time we played at 10,000 so we've decided to keep it 10,000 because tell the truth I was starting to have trouble filling the 11,500 I managed to do it but it was using some other units that I didn't really want to use um because they weren't a uh, purely black templar so um I didn't want to keep going and add more stuff anyway so uh without further ado here is my 10,000 points of uh, kind of Black Templar themes. Obviously, there's a couple of units in there you can see which aren't uh, Space Marine units, but they are themed in my Templar colours. So, starting off on the left over here, we have a brigade. Um, so, um, in the in the front here, I'll just show you the HQs for this particular brigade. So, we have uh, Helbrecht, uh, the, uh, sorry, the Empress Champion, and Grimaldus. They also have the Cenobite Servitors there, which I just thought I'd uh, chuck in. Uh, haven't used them for a little while. Troop choice wise, obviously we have to have six troops for a brigade. We've got a Crusader squad here, here and here, and those three at the front are all combat based. They've all got um, basically chain swords and bolt pistols, plus they all have a neophyte contingent with them, the middle one having uh, 10 neophytes. Um, there's slightly different loadouts on the sergeants, so obviously I, I won't go into too much detail, but you can probably see the loadouts all, all there anyway. So they're there. And then behind them we have another three Crusader squads. And these are all bolter based uh, and they'll kind of have a plasma or a heavy weapon with them so there's one two and three and the last treat choice is the intercessor squad there just um just to sort of round that out um then obviously the other requirements for a brigade is to have three of each type on each slot so we've got three separate choices for the land speed is i made them all separate so they're not actually one thing so that gives me the three there because i actually don't have a lot of fast choice for my templars um we have a, a Vanguard veteran squad here, um, all armed as they're showing. Um, and then over here we have two Stern Guard, one Plasma, one a Grav. So they're in there, two and fives. And they're going to have a dedicated transport of a Razorback with a Laz Cannon each. I've also got one Rhino here, just to sort of maybe chuck a 10-man tank squad, sorry, 10-man Crusader squad in, uh, just to give them a bit of transport, because obviously at the back here in the Heavy Choices Department, we have three Land Raiders, uh, one Normal, two Crusader. And we also have um, a Leviathan Dreadnought and a Hellblaster squad. So that's basically my brigade, uh, which actually uh, is quite formidable to put together in, in the first place. But then obviously, didn't have enough room for other things. So moving over to this side, we have a spearhead detachment in the middle here, led by a lieutenant, or primary lieutenant. And so that's basically two predators and three vindicators. So I have a one vindicator laser destroyer in the middle there. And then we come on to the first Vanguard detachment over here led by two chaplains, one in Terminator armor, one with jump pack armor. Um, and basically we have two Terminator squads there. We have a 10-man standard one and a 10-man assault one. Uh, the assault one is basically half claws, half hammers. Um, and then to basically, because I was running out of slots in other um, <laughs> other detachments, I put in some uh, cent uh, well, centurion, uh, sorry, centurion devastators. Uh, they're armed with the grav weapons and uh, chest missile launchers. And likewise, then I thought I'd just flesh this out with some uh, more forward elite. So we have a uh, for, well, Forge Old Contemptor and also a Derodio Dreadnought with the Alias Missile Launcher on top and then a little 10 man Reaver squad there just to flesh out that Elite section there. Then uh, because I hadn't got enough Vang slots in that particular Vanguard one I had to do another Vanguard detachment over here which is led by uh, well Primaris uh, in Grav arm, uh, Gravis armour and a Primaris Lieutenant this is just to get my HQs spread around a bit. And there's basically six Dreadnoughts in there, two Ironclad uh, three standard dreadnoughts and a venerable dreadnought with a uh, le uh, dual las cannon. So, obviously, I know I've got these separating squads now, but when we actually get to play in the game, they're probably going to be a bit more spread out because obviously it's not a requirement for them to all be deployed together. It was just a, a, just a way that I could show you the easiest way on camera. We have a flyer wing detachment, or an air wing detachment with three flyers in it. We have a cast assault ram and two storm talons. I actually realised I had a storm raven uh, knocking about while I was looking through stuff, but it was unpainted, otherwise I probably would have whacked that in there if I could. And then finally we have three auxiliary detachments. I decided to keep them separate because um, I think technically because they haven't got matching keywords, I couldn't really include them in one Supreme Command attachment anyway. Uh, not Supreme Command attachment, sorry, um, Super Heavy detachment. 
so I just kept them as auxiliaries. Um, obviously, we're playing Apocalypse anyway, so we're not doing kind of some of the restrictions that we get on on chapter tactics and stuff like that. So, um, for instance, with the uh, so the uh, Spartan here, will be quite happy to work with all my Templars. Obviously, the other two not having to do with Space Marines what it won't do. But we have a Spartan, a uh, Knight Paladin, and my Storm Sword. Originally, I'd put my Storm Lord in when we were trying to hit for the higher point link uh, level, but we thought. We're going to dial it back about to 10, so we, uh, we sort of took that one out to make that point happen. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, I'm going to obviously have a Warlord as um, Helbert down here because that makes sense to me. Um, but um, other than that, it's all standard Black Templar stuff. Um, I may upgrade one of the detachments, for instance, um, this one to have the Sword Brother attachment from the Vigilist Defiant book, uh, basically because I wouldn't mind trying out some of the veteran wolves. And I do actually have a few veterans in here, but we'll see how that works out and I will let you know on camera when we start the game if I have done so. So, we'll now see what Dom's bought for his 10,000 points to play this army. Hello, this is Dom from Black Tone Studios and here's my 10,000 points of Chaos Space Marines and Demons. So it's for mainly consisting of uh, the word bearers of the 83rd and we have some corn demons down here. We've got a little nice little battalion of corn demons and a uh, Supreme HQ. We've also got a small detachment of World Eaters led by Zufa and Khan. And so we've got several different detachments here. Uh, so in total, we've got 22 command points. I haven't laid them out appropriate to uh, where the detachments are because that would be chaos. Oh, I suppose this is chaos. So starting on the left over here, let's run through what we've got. We've got two land raiders at the back there. We have got a Mauler Fiend. We have got three Hell Drakes, one World Eater one and two Word Bearer ones. We have got two uh, Rhinos there and a Vindicator. That's a Karen. We've got some Renegade Knights here, three Renegade Knights armed at the combat one here with uh, Icarus Auto Cannon. We've got a Thermal Cannon there on that one there with a Chainsaw. And we've got a Rapid Fire Battle Cannon, an Avenger Gatling and a uh, Missile Pod on top. Over here we have got a Skull Cannon. We've of course got Scully, Lord of Skulls, with a uh, Skull Hurler and Gore Storm. We've got three squads of Blood Letters down here. Two squads of 16 and one squad of 10. Don't ask why I did that, it's literally just because I wanted three squads. Didn't quite have enough painted Blood Letters. Uh, down here we've got two Demon Princes of Corn, uh, one with claws, one with an axe, and a, uh, a Herald there. We've got a Greater Demon of Corn. We've got Araka, the War Fiend here. We have got Scarbrand making his debut appearance. Hopefully new model syndrome won't finish him off. <laughs> Tom cackling in the background. We have got two squads of six blood crushers here with banners. So moving across a bit more, we have got two chaos sorcerers. These are Mark of Zlanish. We have got two um, exalted champions here, one with a power fist, and one with a power axe and a melter on the uh, combi melt on the back we've got a dark apostle here down on the front we've got the chaos lord with a plasma pistol and power sword we've got a chaos lord and terminator armor with two lightning claws we've of course got the vulture who will be the warlord of this army uh he will have tenacious survivor as his warlord trait we've got a corrupted crozius and a pla uh, plasma pistol on him we've got a chaos sorcerer here and behind we have got one squad of Chaos Marines with two Flamers and a Plasma Pistol. We've got two squads here with a Plasma Pistol on Champions and Melter Guns. We've got a squad of Chaos Marines here with a Plasma Pistol um, on the Champion. Back here, we've got the Cultists. So we've got two blobs of Auto Gun Cultists of 20. We have got two squads of uh, Auto Pistols and Combat Weapons. We've got 26 of those in each squad, and each of those have got a Flamer. Whew, we're getting there, we're getting there. We've got the Forge World Dreadnought for the World Eaters there with a plasma cannon. We've got two Hell Brutes for the World Eaters with multi melters and power fists. We've got two squads of World Eater um, Terminators with assortment of weapons, going from a combi melter and a heavy flamer, lots of axes and chain axes, uh, axes and a chain fist there on the champion. Same here without the heavy flamer. We then have Khan the Betrayer. Uh, we've got Zutha here, and we have a Warp Smith moving across. We're almost there, guys. We're getting there. We've got five Warp Talons here. We have got seven Raptors with two Melter Guns, uh, a Power Sword and Champion, and an Icon 
of despair, I think it is, a Swanish one. We have got two squad, two more squads of Raptors, one squad of seven, one squad of six, both with plasma pistols on the champions and with two plasma, uh, two melter guns. These are also all mark of Selenish here. We have got a squad of three mutilators on the front here. We have got a squad of five terminators, one with a Reaper Auto and the rest of Power Fist and a Chain Axe, uh, Chain Fist, why well, keep saying Chain Axe, who knows. Uh, a squad of nine chosen, also making a debut game. We've got three plasma guns there, plasma pistol and a champion and a heavy bolter, also got an icon there. We then have 10 Rubric Marines with Warp Flamers. And finally, we have got one squad of Havocs with four Plasma Guns and one Combi Plasma on the Champion. And that, my friends, is 10,000 points of Chaos. And I think you'll find will be the victors today against the False Emperor's Lapdogs. <laughs> so let's have a look at the mission and deployment. Hello, this is Tom and Dom from Black Toe Studio. Um, and here we are, back on Galadon 4 for another Apocalypse game, starring the uh, mighty Black Templars and the lowly 83rd War Host. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, in front of you here, we've uh, chosen our planet in our little uh, area of space called Galadon 4, which is where we've had a couple of conflicts before. And we are here today to have a 10,000 point matchup of word bearers versus black templars. Um, so just to go over the mission here, um, we've got a reasonably simple premise. Um, essentially, there are six objectives on the board, which I'll just show you quickly now. So we have uh, one over here. We have one over here. We have one in the middle there on the Fortress of Redemption. Uh, we have one sitting on this side of the board over here. We also have one in the streets of the city down here. And then finally, over here, we have one at the back end of the board here. Um, none of it, we, neither of us actually know what side we're on yet, but we're going to sort that out shortly. However, just to go over the mission here, so that's the six objectives. Um, the ones that are in the deployment zones, uh, which is basically this side of the board and uh, this side of the board, we worth two points each, and the ones in the middle of the board we worth three, just to give it a bit of a challenge to get in there. We've also introduced a HQ and super heavy uh, kind of cap on points being able to score. So if um, HQ is a max of eight, which is because I have eight, but Dom has like 19 or something silly. Um, and there's a super heavy max of three points because we have, uh, well, I have three, Dom has four, so we put three was the appropriate number. Uh, we also have a line breaker add on this time where we can score a maximum of three extra points if we have up to three units. Uh, so it's one point, one point per unit in the end zone, so to speak. Um, we're also going to have the objective points I've explained and also uh, slay the warlord. Um, so um, that's the kind of the mission here. Right, well, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get on with our deployment phase and we'll be back in a minute when, and you can see the lovely armies on the board. Right, so Tom has explained the mission. We've seen the forces now. Let's have a look at deployment. So the Chaos Forces have deployed over on the right-hand side of the battlefield, as you can see, the, the lovely red. And on the left-hand uh, left side, you've got the uh, Black Templars. Right, so let's have a bit of a closer look here. So uh, over on this side here, we have got the Lord of Skulls. We've got the Knight Contingent, some Cultists, some Mechanised Chaos Marines, and a bit of heavy uh, hitting stuff there. We've got the two Hell Drakes at the back here. Over towards the city, and um, we've got a Chosen Squad, a Squad of Chaos Marines with a Chaos Lord. Going to aim, hopefully, to take up here into this objective there in the centre. Brave stuff. We've got a Squad of Mutilators and Lord Vaunt in the uh, Lamb Raider here with cultists and the world eaters in the centre. Back here we've got Sorcerer, the Sakaran, it's got a Havocs guarding this uh, uh, objective here. A Neverland Raider with the Rubric Marines and the cultists in front, and a Sorcerer behind there. A Hell Drake here, and the Mauler Fiend over on the right flank. In reserve, there is a lot. Half the Chaos Forces are still in reserve and waiting to come down. We've used the uh, Stratagem, that means we can just summon and deep strike the uh, Great Demon of Corn, two squads of Blood Crushers and Scarbrand in, so that's taken a fair few um, command points from our total. Over here, however, we've got the Black Templars. They're amassing a large force in the centre here. We've got Vindicators, we've got Land Raiders, we've got a Razorback, we've got um, Centurions, lots of Dreadnoughts, lots and lots of Dreadnoughts. A couple of Crusader squads, there's a Crusader squad up on this building here guarding this objective. Two more mechanised squads here with um, Grimaldus in this land raider. 
breaking that force up, we've got three more dreadnoughts. Um, <laughs> and never enough dreadnoughts, apparently. I, uh, I'm going to disagree with that. We've got a, a super heavy here next to the Spartan and a la large force of Primaris Marines and uh, a few more fancy units. Guarding the Redoubt here. And up against them, we've got the Mechanized and the Knights down there. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be bloody. We've got a squad of Terminators up here in the Assault Ramp. And we've got two gunships guarding the Assault Ramp. Down on the far flank here, we've got another Lamb Raider. Has this got a Crusader squad in? No, that is empty. An empty Lamb Raider, a uh, Predator, Contemptor, and a Knight. So massive forces. This battlefield look, looks epic. I hope you agree. Um, so currently, the Black Templars, surprise, surprise, um, <laughs> deployed Boy. first. So they get plus one to the roll. So let's see who goes first. Tom, roll the dice. Three. Oh, come on. Come on, Cass. Four. Okay. So it's a, it's a draw. Let's roll again. Five. So that's a six. Six. Oh, Whoa, six. Suspense. Six. <sighs> How on, Templars? A one. Five. Six. So another six. You dare. Ah, four. Okay. So Templars are going first. Okay. Unless, of course, you dare. You we dare. can you seize. Dare. Let's do it. Ah, no. Right. <laughs> Guys, let's move over to turn one for the Black Templars. Okay, so here we go with Templar turn one movement. Um, generally, there's been quite a lot of movement uh, up the board, obviously, because uh, I'm trying to close the gap on the heretic scum on the other side of the board. Um, so <laughs> over here, we've had the knight move up, the, the relic contempt move up. All three flyers of circling the uh, prey down here. And then over here, we have one land speeder, two land speeder. All the primaries have uh, moved up to occupy this objective here, and the Obviously, the uh, fortress here to try and hold it down for as long as they can. Uh, the Duradir stood still, uh, and but uh, so did the um, Vindicator here. This predator had to move to get some line of sight and stuff. The um, Spartan has moved forward tentatively towards this area. Um, we have had the super heavy move forward as well, and then basically over here, as you can see, almost everything's just shuffled into the streets here, trying to trying to feel out what the enemy's going to do in a minute. So uh, right now we're going to head on into Templar's turn one shooting because obviously we don't do psychic unlike the heretics um, and we'll see what happens. So as the Black Templars end their turn one shooting, a reasonably successful turn for actually killing things. Over here, um, although I must admit this took a lot more firepower than I anticipated, the Lord of Skulls is dead. However, that did take the combined firepower of all three of these flyers the knight, contemptor. this predator, this contemptor, this land raider, the land, ra land speeder in the middle here, the hellblaster squad, um, the predator over here, and the quad, the four, eight las cannon shots from the Spartan. So, obviously, that's great. But then you look over there and think there's a few more things we've got to deal with. So, not brilliant. And then we kind of shifted the focus over to this side of the board. Um, this uh, this monstrosity fired into. The land raider over there, I and mean, in conjunction with a couple of extra shots in there, managed to actually destroy it, leaving the mutilators out on uh, on the ground there. And on this side, um, basically everything in this quadrant that could fire shot at the cultists or the land raider. Land raider still on 13 wounds, so that's pretty much okay. Um, and basically, the cultists would probably suffered the most, I think, in the first round. So there's a few left here. There's a few left there. However, we wiped out the squad that was in front here and all but, was that two there? Yeah, there's a few. There's oh, there's the oh, there's some all there. Oh, they're in the trench as well, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's the they're, they're survivors, they're still alive. So, yeah, nothing, nothing too bad. And that obviously got me one point for killing a super heavy in that round. So at the moment, it's one nil. Yeah, I'm sure that won't change in a minute when it's Dom's turn. So when I head over to the Whale Bearers and Chaos Forces, turn one. Right. End of turn one movement for the Chaos Forces. And as you can see, it's a general advance across the field. Chaos Forces are pushing up all along the line. So down here, the cultists uh, with the World Eaters and the Lamb Raider are pushing up this street here. Um, we've got the uh, Maulafine down here as well. Maybe possibly able to get a charge in somewhere down there. Uh, the Helldrake has flown it down into the street here, hoping to uh, do a bit of flaming damage and lock other things in. Combat. And down here, the Chosen, the Mutilators, the Exalted Champion, the Surviving Cultists are pushing up the street, hoping to be able to do something there and hold back the Tide of Templars. 
Down here, Sir Karen has remained stationary with support there from the Chaos Lord and the Sorcerer. We should be able to pull off something, hopefully. Uh, down here, the squad of Chaos Marines are try, you know, slowly pushing their way through the uh, building here. The Rhinos are pushed up there with support of the Renegade Knights close behind. Down on this flank, both Helldrakes are flying into the uh, Space Marine uh, flyers, hoping to tie them up for a bit and hold them back. So that is it so far for Turn 1 for um, Chaos. Let's move into Turn 1 shooting for Chaos and hopefully we can do something. Right, so the end of Turn 1 psychic and shooting for the word bearers. So down here the um, Hellbrutes and the Dreadnought all fired over towards the Vindicator and did nothing. One of the Hellbrutes hit but didn't wound and the Dreadnought actually overheated and uh, damaged himself. Uh, the Lamb Raider fired as well, didn't do anything there. Uh, we did a Prescience cast upon him to try and help him out a little bit but nothing really helped at all. Uh, moving across the battlefield, the uh, Sakaran fired along with the um, Chosen here and the Hell Drake, and we took out the uh, Razorback that was guarding the streets there. We can try a potential charge in a moment, see if we can do something else to those um, Stern Guard which have appeared. Down here, the um, Rhinos fired the Havoc launchers and Combi Bolters, doing a bit of damage onto the uh, Land Speeder there. The Renegade Knights joined in with uh, Heavy Stubbers and did a bit more damage. The um, Thermal Cannon back here, got one shot, did one wound. I know. Did it, I think it did a little bit of damage, but one not. Wound yeah, one wound to the um, Spartan. That was a little bit embarrassing. Um, and across here as well, this knight fired off shots everywhere. And with the help of the Hell Drakes, he took both of the Storm Talons out of the skies and we killed off two of the Intercessor Marines down there. So uh, a little bit of damage. We've got an assault going off now. We're going, the Hell Drakes are going in combat. These two are going to try and take on this thing and uh, lock it up for a bit and do a bit of damage. And the other Hell Drake, as I said, is going to try a potential charge into the Stern Guard there. And maybe the Mauler Fiend might try a charge. Who knows? So let's move in to turn one assault for Chaos. Right, so turn one assault for Chaos. So we uh, both Helldrakes flew in here. This one went first and got hit quite badly by Overwatch, taking six wounds to Overwatch. Uh, and then lost three in combat against a big assault ramp, apparently. He just ram him, out, ram him around. Um, but he did do some damage to the assault ramp. I think he did three wounds, three wounds to the assault ramp. Uh, we used Demon Forge on this one. He unfortunately wasn't able to do anything. The, uh, the uh, assault ramp passed all its saves there. Um, moving across the battlefield. We have got down here. The Helldrake flew in here, killing off one of the stern guard there. Uh, it did take one wound back from the sergeant with his power sword. And that was a bit of a pain, but there you go. And down across here. Maul of Fiend got double one. I was not rerolling that charge. Um, so that was it. That is all of our shooting and combat. We didn't do a great deal, but then again, there's a few more turns and a lot more stuff to come on. So let's move in to turn two for the Imperial Lapdogs. Okay, so as we enter turn two for the Templars, um, over here at the end of the movement phase, we've had a Land Raider shuffle around here with the Knight and the remaining Relic Contemptor here who is going to be hopefully removing this air threat, but we shall see. <laughs> the Predator here has stayed still to maximize his firepower against the Cultists, because they're really dangerous. Um, back here, we had no movement on this back line, except for the Captain and the Lieutenant, who are just spreading their auras around to make sure that they're giving the maximum rerolls to everything in range there. Um, Helbrecht has decided to hurtle forward here. He hasn't got out yet. He just wants to see what's happening with the Knights first, because uh, that could be quite a painful escapade for him if they get into combat. Uh, the Leviathan has just come up the back here to uh, reinforce that area. Um, the Super Heavy here stays still because it's in range of what it needs to be. And likewise over here, the Ironclads and the other Dreadnought have moved up to create a screen in the street uh, as it heads towards this Helldrake. And then we had a disembark here of the Empress Champion, his 15-man uh, Crusader squad, as they head into the breach. I mean, there's actually quite a lot of nasty things in there, but we'll see what happens. Also, the Centurions have moved up another four inches, mightily moving forwards with their weaponry that hopefully is in Ranger's turn. And then over here, we had the Stern Guard drop out of the uh, Razorback here and have head towards the... Hell uh, sorry, the... Um, Maulafine. Maulafine, that's the one, sorry. Um, so hopefully the Plasmas there will 
pay dividends. We shall see. That is the end of movement. I didn't do any. I haven't dropped anything from reserve yet. However, we'll now move on into the shooting phase. Okay, so as uh, the turn two shooting ends for the Templars, over here, a lot of firepower piled into one of the Helldrakes here and managed to destroy it. We then shot a few extra guns at the remaining Helldrake and took it down to seven wounds. However, we can obviously assault that shortly. The assault ram here flew into the middle here and fired all its shots at the central knight there and was joined, well, that triggered a stratagem to rotate Iron Shield, so it gave it additional save. Um, which obviously paid paid off, I think, because we shot pretty much everything over here. I mean, literally everything. So all the so the Spartan, Leviathan, Storm Sword, the back, back tanks here, Derridio, De anything that was in range over here shot at that central line. Took only managed to take it down to three wounds, so we didn't quite kill it, and that was a bit of a bit of a shame. But hey ho, it was pretty good going anyway. Um, over here, a slightly different story. Um, I think I started with the plasmas here and managed to take the Maulafine down to eight wounds. However, I've still got to uh, get through the rest of that, which is going to be quite painful. Sorry, six wounds, I should say, not eight. Um, and then, basically, we shot anything that was good strength weaponry at this land raider here. And I think it was eventually taken out um, by, I think, Lascans in the end. So, it was, uh, uh, was it the Meltgun? I think it was the Meltgun, actually, wasn't it? Rockets from the Centurions. Oh, sorry, Centurions. Sorry, thanks, Dom. Um, it was actually the Centurions down here, because I forgot I actually had them. <laughs> um, and they managed to take out the Lamro there, and the Rubrics got out, and then the Crusader here uh, lit them up and managed to take out the majority of the squad. However, still a few flames there to worry about. I'm not looking forward to uh, assaulting them or being uh, in flame range, to be honest. Over here, we managed to take out the remaining Helldrake in the middle here, but it did take a lot of firepower from lots of small arms, basically, in the end. Um, and uh, that didn't leave me with a lot of options to shoot anything else, except for the, I think, the little, um, is it the Maul of Mutilators. Mutilators, sorry, pardon me, um, which I managed to take uh, two wounds off with some remaining shots. So it was a reasonably successful shooting phase, can't really complain. Uh, still a lot on the board. So uh, we'll now head on to a few assaults in that turn two for Templars. Okay, so as the battle hots up in the centre here, uh, it was a pretty even Stevens kind of score here, if you consider points wise, because uh, I, I lost uh, essentially five and Dom lost, I think, six, so not, not too much happened there. Um, unfortunately, I was hoping to kill them and consolidate into the rubrics, but that's not going to happen, so the flamers are on the board. Over here, Maulafine lost a wound and killed one of uh, the Stern Guard over here, so not good news for them at the moment. Um, however, on this side of the board, we did manage to clear out the remaining Helldrake. Um, and we're now sitting there ready to move on across the board if we want to in the following turn, depending on what comes on. So, that is all of the uh, combat for this phase. We're now going to swing on into turn two for the word bearers. Mm. Turn two movement for the word bearers. Um, so down here, we started having some of the reinforcements coming in here. So with the stratagem we played before the game, it's got a blood crushes and scar brand have come over in this corner here. So behind some of the Templar armor, hope to you know draw them in. And down here we've got sort of warp talons, the sorcerer and terminator armor, and some raptors once again behind Templar armor there to try and take away some of their firepower because at the moment they are definitely. Uh, taking their uh, horrible toll upon the uh, Chaos Forces. Down here, we've got the other half of the reinforcements from the Stratagem coming in. So we've got the Great Demon of Corn and some Blood Crushers, and hopefully they can do something to that knight. I'm not actually sure, sure they can, but let's give it a go. Uh, the knights have just strutted forward slightly, and the Rhinos have just got pushed forward once again, getting towards the trench, towards the Primaris Marines, see if they can do anything there. This squad of Chaos Marines are just slowly edging through the centre here, and just trying to do a bit of damage, possibly. Down here, the um, Chaos Lord and the Dark Apostle down there. You can just see him tucked away. Um, well, that's calm. Dark Apostle's down here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> He's down there. Um, have summoned two of the Demon Princes from the Chaos Demon retinue there. Everyone else is pushing up along this centre here. Uh, down here. Oh, we suffered one mortal wound down here when the World Eaters tried to join the Word Bearers in summoning and uh, he, uh, he failed, he got double one and suffered a mortal wound there. Down here, the cultists have fallen out of combat, getting ready for the Rubik Marines to light them up and the Exalted Champion is there with the Dreadnought to help him out if the uh, Rubrics aren't able to do it. Hellbrute's pushing up here, moving up through the centre 
And that is pretty much it on the movement front. Um, once again, this guy is still locked in combat. Hopefully he's able to kill someone in the shooting phase with his uh, pistols, but we'll find out. So let's move in to turn two, psychic and shooting for chaos. Turn two, psychic and shooting for chaos. So down here, the um, Thousand Suns there, uh, along with a couple of other small shots, took out the Crusader squad here. The multi-melter from this Hellbrute fired in, taking this uh, Vindicator down to six wounds. This one fired off that way, I uh, wasn't able to do anything, unfortunately. Down along here, the Sakaran fired up doo -doo 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 -doo, with the Icarus auto, auto cannon from there. And we finally got rid of the Cassius Assault Ramp. I think three Terminators died. Two. Two Terminators died when it came down. Uh, the rest are still there at the moment. Uh, the rest of the firepower really was kind of spread throughout. This knight here, the Renegade Knight with all the guns, used Trail of Destruction, the Renegade Knight stratagem, as it's a Renegade Knight detachment. We fired off into the Spartan there and have taken it down to three wounds. A lot of damage has been dealt out to that. I'm not sure how good it is now of any three wounds. I can't imagine it's spectacular anymore. Hellbrook's there. <laughs> oh, Hellbrook's there. Oh, there. <laughs> okay, moving back here, we had a warp time go off along the backfield here from the Sorcerer, moving these um, warp talons up. Hopefully we're going to get some charges off. They're unable to overwatch the warp talent, so if we can lock three units up here, at least we'll prevent a little bit of shooting in the next turn, because the knights are pushing forward, as well as the mechanised Chaos Marines. And finally down here, this dreadnought was hit down to three wounds by melter gunfire from this squad of raptors there. So it's, it's been pretty good. Hopefully uh, combat will kind of push us over the edge here, and we'll be able to do a bit more and capitalise on the uh, advances we've made. So let's move into turn two, Assault for Chaos. Turn to Assault for Chaos. So down here, the Blood Crushers got in combat there and took the Knight down to nine wounds there. It lost two Blood Crushers on the counter-attack when it came back. Um, however, Demon, uh, Great Demon of Corn didn't make it in, even with the re-rolls. I wasn't able to make it into combat. The same story over here, unfortunately. Um, the uh, Demons here were unable. Scarbrand wasn't able to get in there and these Blood Crushers weren't able to get in there. However, the Warp Talons, though, did tie up these three bits of artillery in the back line for the uh, Templars, and they're not able to fire next turn, luckily. Um, but really, um, we did a bit of damage to the uh, Dreadnought, but that was it. Cross here, the Mutilators charged in, did nothing, <laughs> as per usual. Uh, Demon Prince and Hellbrute. Demon Prince took this um, Dreadnought down to two wounds. This Hellbrute ripped apart the other Ironclad Dreadnought there, so that is now gone. Um, however, that Demon Prince didn't make it in, did take some damage to Overwatch, and uh, the, the uh, three cultists charged in, did a bit of attacking, and then got butchered by the Marines. We keep going around the battlefield. Battlefield is looking really epic at the moment. There's models everywhere, combat breaking out across the line. Uh, models kind of having to fight battles. They don't really want to fight. Um, down here, the uh, other Renegade Knight charged in um, on a bit of a suicide thing, and unfortunately, he died, but he didn't blow up. Although I did use a reroll to try and kill him, he didn't blow up at all, which shame. is a shame. Which is a shame, yeah. Uh, and over here, we had the Mauler Fiend has broken free. He has killed off the last Black Templar, trying to tie him down, and he has fallen. Good times. And that is it for um, Chaos in turn two. Let's move into turn three for the Black Templars and see if the uh, Imperial Fools are able to fight back. Okay, so as the Templars enter turn three movement, um, and at the end of that particular phase, we have managed to do a lot of movement and a lot of deployment. So, starting over here on the backfield, this uh, squad of 10 uh, ter assault terminators has dropped in here, so we've got lots of thunder hammers and uh, lightning claws here to try and hopefully do something about this back here. However, it could be nasty depending on what happens. Um, we've backed out of combat in the middle here uh, to get away from basically all the warp towns here, so it opens up for lots of shooting from various units here, um, including obviously this has moved back just to number one, squeeze the area a bit more, but also get the flamers in range. Um, this uh, dreadnought was turned around to help as well. Over here, we've had this uh, Lamarrow deposits all of its uh, contents in the front there, so Grimaldus is ready in the middle there with all his uh, Crusaders there. Over this side, um, everything's kind of reshuffled around. The Emperor Champion's moved away from all the special characters here, because he's quite brave, but uh, I think the, uh, 
uh, heretics will definitely gang up on him, not in an honourable one-on-one duel, you know, so, because they know what he's like. Uh, and obviously over here we've just prepared some more shooting into this Maul of Fiend. And over here, a little squad of Reavers has jumped in, just ready to make some chaos in the backfield, hopefully, but we'll see, because uh, I've had mixed success with them in the past. Over here, this land speed has jumped over and landed behind the Knights, just to get some more shooting, but also just to clear the way for the Spartan and various other units that are starting to co coalesce in this area. So we've got um, this uh, land speed just moved forward slightly, so he will be hitting on a slightly lower uh, ballistic skill, but he did want to get the half range for the, the Knights. So, I think that's all the movement and stuff done. Oh, no, pardon me, there's one more bit. There's some Vanguard veterans over here uh, with, a cha with a chaplain ready to uh, get a scalping over here because they, they don't like greater demons. They're a bit, a bit like grey knights in that way. So, um, also heretics in general. <laughs> so that is the end of the movement phase for the Templars. We'll now head on into the shooting phase. Okay, so as we enter the end of Templar's turn three shooting, down here, we had a lot of shots come into Scarbrand here, which was basically Laz Cannons from here, Predator shots, um, and also a couple of Laz Cannon shots from the Storm Sword. Um, unfortunately, um, it only got down to four wounds, but that's pretty good going, to be fair. Um, then we moved over to sort of this end of the table, where the Knights and the uh, Contempt of Dreadnought here managed to make short work of the remaining demons in front of them, which was good. We had a lot of shots ploughing from various sources, so basically the Terminators, the uh, two land speeders, and also the damaged Spartan into this uh, shooty knight, but only managed to take down to 20 wounds. So only four wounds taken off there, with lots of uh, shots having been fired. Um, over here at the back line, we managed to wipe out all of the things apart from the Sorcerer, uh, it was a pretty bad flamer uh, fuselard from the Storm Sword into the Raptors that destroyed them. And basically it was the Primaris that managed to finish off everything down here. So, we're now we're on to this side of the board um, where essentially it was uh, Hellbrutes and Maulafines was the order of the day. So the Maulafine over here died to some fire from here. We also, the, well that was actually from the um, Centurion Devastators there. And then we basically had everything else fire into the Hellbrute that was hiding here and killing that, and also everything that was in front of this Hellbrute that was here managed to kill that off. So, that's all the shooting. We've definitely got some combat coming up, so let's see if the Templars can turn the screw. Okay, so as we end turn three for the Templars in the combat phase, down here, this Vanguard squad charged in. However, I stupidly did the knight first, and then I was interrupted. Um, so they took five, sorry, four casualties, uh, however they did, they did manage to do five wounds back in the end, so not too bad, but a bit silly for me. Um, over to this side of the table, unfortunately these uh, Terminators failed their charges into both these units here, didn't even make it into one of the nearer ones either. Um, the Templars in the middle here with Hellbrecht have managed to take out a Rhino which is on two wounds. Also the Spartan charge in taking that Rhino down to six wounds along with uh, a couple of extra hits from the guys down here. Um, depositing a couple of squads there, so there's a bit of a melee erupting in the middle. Over to this side of the board. Um, down here, the mutilators uh, managed to take out one stern guard, however, the demon prince in the middle took a hell of a lot of pounding from all the units that were down here, and obviously the dreadnought's now free to, to maraud around this area. There was nothing really happened over this side, because unfortunately the reavers here failed their charge into the sorcerer, so not, not the best on this side of the board, but to be honest, it was a bit of a mixed bag anyway. And at the back here, the sorcerer uh, took a wound from the uh, storm sword there after, and then also battered it at the backside, but didn't manage to do anything. So that is the combat phase over and done with in turn three for Templars. It's now time to roll on over to the filthy word bearers. Right, so turn three movement for the chaos forces. And it's been another good turn, I think. I think I predict good things for this turn. So moving over on this flank over here, the Hellbrute has pushed forward there with this Demon Prince. Um, so hopefully they're able to do something. Demon Prince has come on from the uh, main street here. He's coming onto the side street. Cultists are there. The Rubric Marines, however, have fallen down onto this side street by the containers and are gonna be putting some flaming death, hopefully, upon the um, Reavers. Being confident, of course, now the, um, the Skull Takers from Zufa and the Skull Cannon have appeared also in the side street to put some support. We need to make sure we take this objective and we hold it. The Marines are slowly whistling out on this flag. We need to make sure we get this objective. On the back here, it still remains still. 
Although, to be fair, a lot of demons have been summoned and a lot of Chaos characters, both World Eater and Werebearer, are suffering from it. <laughs> this Chaos Lord summoned in uh, Araka over here. Warp Smith summoned in the Skull Cannon. And the Dark Apostle summoned in some Blood Letters over here. The stuff is coming in all over the place. Uh, the Chosen have moved up with Khan the Betrayer. Khan the Betrayer is going to go into this squad, squad here and hopefully be able to cut them apart. Araka, I'm not sure he's going to be able to make it this turn, but he is still there. Knights remain where they are. Chaos Marines have disembarked. There's a lot of Chaos Marines now. I think there's 18 Chaos Marines. Hopefully a bit of firepower. We can try and get through to the Warlord back there. But we're going to try our best and uh, hopefully it will pay off. Uh, these three Chaos Marines have got a mission. Optimistic. We're going to try and take out the Spartan. Down here, uh, this squad have deployed down here and across the field, down here, the Warlord has joined the battle, the Vulture has landed behind Scarbrand, Scarbrand and the Blood Crushers are pushed up towards the Terminators and they are joined here by two squads of Raptors and the Vulture. Let's move in to um, turn three, psyching and shooting. Right, turn three, psychic and shooting. So let's start over here on this corner here. We had the uh, raptors firing off melters in there, taking that one down to one wound. Melters fired once more over here into the predator uh, and didn't do anything, unfortunately. We had a bellowing roar, roar, roar sorry, from Scarbrand, took one wound off one of the lightning claw terminators. Tom's quite reluctant to lose the uh, just, uh, shields, unfortunately. Uh, down here, the, squa the squads fired in here, killing off several of the neophytes. The Spartan has finally gone. Um, it was taken out by a melter gun that came in. The squad also up here took two wounds off with the plasma pistol firing in. So it's done a nice bit of damage there. The Knight, however, have been fired over towards the Hellblasters, causing a bit of casualties there. This is going to be a main threat. So I'll try and deal with that a little bit. So we fired a few shots in there. Terminators fired shots into this Knight, taking one wound off, and that's it. Down here, this um, land speeder remains strong with one wound. Took some damage from the heavy bolters from the Spartan here. The Spartan fired Spartan? Yeah. Tukaren. Yeah, sorry, the Tukaren fired on. Too much Spartan talk. Uh, and did a bit of damage there. Down here, the Havocs fired with the Terminators. And the Cultists took out the Razorback there, which was quite a good little shot there. Unfortunately, the Razorback exploded and dealt horrible mortal wounds out, taking the champion down to one wound here. A couple of cultists died. All the rubrics died, but the rubrics beforehand had fired into these guys here, causing a few wounds onto the um, reavers there, which is quite good. And down here as well, we had the skull cannon and the hell brute, sorry, the skull cannon here, and the hell brute down here, fired into the vindicator, destroying that. And finally, the last bit of shooting we had were the Chosen down here, firing into the Dreadnought there and destroying the Dreadnought. So a few units have been taken away from the Black Templar forces. Chaos are slowly gaining an advantage and pushing that advantage the best they can. Casualties are high on both sides, but of course there's a lot of hatred on both sides and we're going to win this battle for the Chaos Gods. So we're going to move into Term 3, Assault for Chaos. Right, end of turn three combat for the Chaos Forces. So down here, one Terminator fell, uh, decided to use the, um, the Chainsword and it did a little bit of damage. Um, although he's on ten wounds now, so he's taken a bit back by the Terminators. Down here, the Bloodthirster has killed off most of the uh, Vanguards and there's a Chaplain remaining there. But they're still holding, they're still doing well here. And in the centre, all three Chaos Marine squads charged in. They've done a fair bit of damage to the Crusaders, but the Crusaders are holding the thin black line in the centre there. They are holding their ground. They will not bend to the word bearers. Over on this flank, however, Scarbrand and the Blood Crushers charged in. Uh, the Terminators are now down to less than half strength from their beginning point, although Scarbrand has fallen. He did take a couple of Terminators with him, but he is, he is no more, and the Blood Crushers are still holding firm there. Down across in the centre here, the sorcerer got charged in the previous turn by the uh, the tank. He's now on one wound, uh, and the tank is still just reversing over him. But you know, 
This is what happens if you go against the Super Heavy. Uh, down in the centre here, the Crusader squad has been wiped out. Khan came in, killing off seven of the Crusaders. Uh, the Chosen came in, killed a couple off, and the Champion himself actually did a lot of damage. I think he killed uh, quite a few of the Neophytes himself with his Power Fist there. Lord Vaunt doing well. The Mutilators killed off the last of the um, veterans here and pushed forwards slightly. And I think that is pretty much it on the uh, assaulting front. We've done it's been pretty good for Chaos. And the Marines are still holding firm. The battlefield is once again still looking epic. There's battles everywhere. There's models that still haven't seen any conflict and others that have been engaged for ages. Um, right, anyway, let's move on to turn four for the Black Templars. So the Templars start out at turn four and the movement has completed. Over here, we have had a knight move in towards this great, uh, oh, sorry, bloodthirst, isn't it? Sorry, yeah. pardon me, bloodthirst over here. Uh, we've had the contempt, relic contempt to move towards the terminators here. That may be a bad move, we never know. Um, well, we will know in a minute, I should say. Um, and over here, we have had the land raider move up, getting a bead on several high priority targets in the middle here. Uh, over this side of the board, it's getting a little bit, well, it's getting a bit full of Chaos, really. So we're going to try and do some stuff using various units that are already in this area, so like the Derodea here. Also got plenty of firepower on the back end of the board here, so the only things that have moved up is there's been a little move into the middle here to try and assist the beleaguered Crusader squad that they're currently holding firm due to the Hell's Reach servitors there, which makes you mean they don't run away because they're not chickens. Uh, the Intercessors are still holding strong there. Um, and also the Gravas captain has turned around and has decided to go and beat some demons up, hopefully. Moving to this side of the board, where a lot of the movement has happened, the Land Raider Crusader here has moved back slightly to allow space for the squad that got out of this Rhino to move up and make a bolter line here, along with another bolter line behind them and also another bolter line up here. So hopefully with a, plenty of firepower going into this area, we should hopefully at least take out one. Uh, and over here, a little bit of moving, the Land Raider Crusader here has moved up, uh, mainly just to try and put some pressure in this area because there's quite a lot of stuff floating around here now. Uh, the Reavers have done a run move or advance move to get around the back here because obviously there is an objective sitting back here and they want to try and put a little pressure on it, see if that uh, helps uh, in the long run. So that is all the Templar movement. We'll now head on into the shooting phase. We had a lot of fire come in from the Contemptor here and the uh, Knight into this squad. Um, killing a few off, but not, not, not as many as I hoped, but enough to make it uh, worthwhile a charge. At the back over here, a little bit more success for the Raptor killing, because uh, we managed to clear this squad off, but it did take a little bit of firepower from, I think, various sources from over from, from here, here, and here. Um, and also, I think the Predator here fired in and took out a few more. We also had to use the Derradio as well at the end. Uh, we had a couple of pistol shots go into this uh, squad of demons here, but um, didn't do anything in the end. Uh, the Sorcerer survived to fight another day after the Metal Shot failed and the, uh, the resulting Storm Bolt Shot that followed up did nothing. The flamers. Oh, and the Flamers. Oh, yeah, sorry. He took, uh, took 10 Flamers, wasn't he? Yeah, I think it was. Quite a, quite a good survival rate, really, that Sorcerer. Um, over here, uh, we managed to take out the Plague. Um, I think it was the Plague Champion, is that right? Yeah, yeah the Cold Champion. The Cold Champion and also the Chosen Squad. How that did take everything here and also, I mean, literally everything. Everything in this here, here here, here, and also the, um, the Crusader here, which had to fire at him because it was the nearest unit in the end. Um, over this side, we did try and uh, take out a few. I think we got rid of the, I think it was the Hellbrute that was sitting yeah. in there. Uh, so another Hellbrute, I think it's all the Hellbrute's gone sadly now. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, and then also the uh, Leviathan in the middle here, uh, to put some flamers on top of the battlement there, took it, taking out the last, um, well, well, actually it was actually took the squad down to one. And then unfortunately, um, Helbrick then fired his uh, multi-melter or melter gun into the Rhino here, which blew up. It took off a, a mortal wound there, took the last guy off the battlements and also took out three units there, sorry, three men there and also one unit of my guys there. So, and three, and sorry, and three wounds off the land speeder and two wounds off and killing a Terminator there. So it's actually quite a nasty little explosion in the middle there. However, it has um, kind of spaced out the middle, I think, a bit. So that's all the shooting done. We'll now head on to the assault phase and see what happens. Okay, so at the end of Templar's turn for Assault, quite a lot has happened this phase, so bear with me here. 
Over here, the knight charged in to the bloodthirst, thinking an easy kill. Unfortunately, it backfired considerably and he blew up. However, he did actually blow up properly. So he managed to take off uh, a few wounds on the um, bloodthirst in return, get him down to four, but he also managed to kill the chaplain and the sergeant behind him. So that was not good. So he's now moved upward after killing him a little bit this way. It's probably looking at these land raids or something else. Um, the Contemptor also charged in. Didn't actually, I don't think he actually killed anyone in the end, did he? Um, no. And then lost five wounds. Uh, so he's in a bit of trouble. At the backfield over here, I think it was uh, two blood letters to one Terminator? Yeah. Yeah, that was basically it. Nothing really special happened there. In the middle, it turned into a bit of a slog fest. And no one's really come out the victor there, I don't think. So, um, basically, there's a few, a few men off each side, but not enough to force anything considerably interesting and over there that fight ended in the knights being on is that eight wounds eight, eight wounds yeah. left and he took out another terminator in here sadly khan has fallen um I, he did have a kind of a, a tall order to deal with all those marines and various other things around here uh, also we took out the mutilator and the plague champion yep. which i was in the shooting pardon me uh, and finally over here the emperor champion being rather bold thought that demon prince looks reasonably wounded he didn't manage to even hurt him and then he got killed uh, <laughs> in the process. And also the primary lieutenant took four wounds, so he's down to one. So that's looking a bit dicey in this area over here because we, we're not quite on the objective either. So uh, that is pretty much everything combat-wise. So as we enter the last, well, let's turn, sorry, turn four for the word bearers. And they'll be back in a moment. Right, turn four movement for the word bearers. So we have pushed everything up we've got now. Um, we need to get these points before it's too late. So down here, the greater demon of corn has freed himself up. He's only got four wounds left. He's gonna try a cheeky bit of a charge in there. Will he survive Overwatch? Good chance he won't. <laughs> Who knows? Um, down here, the vulture and the remaining raptors have come up here to engage this predator there and see if we can do anything to him. Uh, the knight has broken out of combat and is heading towards that leviathan. Both wounded titans of war. Uh, and we will see who survives that conflict. Over in the centre, the bloodletters corn has uh, been grateful. This squad of bloodletters pushed up with Raka. This squad of bloodletters, the herald and another squad have been summoned. So they're ready for their fifth turn, um, if they're still alive. Uh, Havoc's had a reshuffle up here to get themselves in position to fire some shots over into these reavers that are trying a cheeky little flanking manoeuvre. Uh, the Skull Cannon also has turned its attention. Um, being able to ignore cover, he should hopefully be able to kill maybe one or two of them. The Terminators, uh, Zufa's retinue here, are moving up here into uh, close proximity with their melters to deal with this land raider, as well as these two sorcerers. Cultists have moved themselves in the way of that centurion um, to make sure the uh, champion and the demon prince remain safe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> um, so, undisturbed. Uh, yeah, undisturbed. So let's move in to turn four. Psychic and shooting for chaos. Right, turn four, psychic and shooting for the chaos forces. So down here, we tried a couple of smites into the land raider, we did one wound there. Uh, it was then joined by um, uh, two melter guns coming in, lots of combi bolters going in, uh, and he's now down to seven shots, uh, seven shots, seven wounds there. Best thing over here though, was a skull cannon. Skull cannon fired in, killing off five, five of the reavers. They just, they're just gone. Um, we also had some over, overcharged plasma shots coming in from the Havocs into the other building, leaving just the one reaver down there trying to collect up some dog tags from his fallen comrades. <laughs> and uh, down in the, down here again, we have prescience on the Sakaran, fired up, taking um, quite a lot of damage off that land raider. I think he's on 10 wounds now. Yes, he is. Yeah, 10 wounds on the land raider. Uh, Uraka threw his axe into one of the crusaders, burying the axe into the corpse. Um, across the field, we had the knight there, firing its Icarus autocannon and the melter gun into the Leviathan, leaving him on eight wounds there. So he's still standing, still standing strong. Down here, the Raptors and the Vulture are fired into the uh, Predator, leaving him on three wounds there. 
Uh, so a fair bit of shooting. Oh, we did kill the uh, land speeder. I was yeah. being very cocky with the Sakaran firing its heavy bolters over here and just finally finished him off. We don't like the idea of him just floating around doing who knows what behind us. So we are going to move into turn four. Assault for Chaos. Right, turn for Assault for Chaos. So down here, the Raptors and uh, the Vulture are able to kill off the Predator there. Unfortunately, the Blood Crushers have fallen, but the Chaplain is now down to one wound there. Uh, the Terminators are now freed up, which is a bit worrying. Down here, the Blood Burst has charged in and has taken a heavy toll upon the Land Raider, although the Land Raider is still functioning there. In the centre, the, the battle still continues. Only a handful of word bearers and a few crusaders left there, but the intercessors are there, readying their bolt guns to shoot any survivors. <laughs> Over across down here, the Contemptor has fallen. Um, the Chaos Lord charged in and just sliced it apart with his lightning claws, which is what we want really, isn't it? And moving across to the center, we have got a big blob of Marines and Terminators hammering against this land raider. It's only got two wounds left. The Demon Prince finished off the Lieutenant there, scoring another point for the Chaos Forces. And down in the centre here, Arak had charged in with all his blood letters and have killed a lot of these Marines. Eight have fallen in that squad and uh, five have fallen in that squad or six. Six have fallen in that squad there. Uh, no, five. And Arak has now scored five more uh, of his points, which have increased his stats by plus one movement, plus two strength, and plus one attack, if I remember rightly. So he's doing all right for himself there. He's doing well. So that is it for Chaos in Turn 4. Let's move into Turn 5 for the Templars. One last thing. My, uh, my knight charged into the Leviathan. As you can see, they're both not here anymore. Uh, my knight took a lot of overwatch and was down to one wound when he got into combat with the Leviathan. He, hey then, he then destroyed the Leviathan, which exploded killing off most of the servitors here. Uh, did a bit of damage to uh, the big man himself, Helbrick. A few Chaos Marines died, a bit of damage over here, and uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty nasty. Luckily for everyone, the knight didn't go apocalyptic and he just fell to the ground. There's bodies and everything strewn across the field. And that is it now. So let's go to turn five for the Black Templars. So as we enter the last turn, which is turn five, um, we are entering end game here. Uh, so the Templars have had their movement phase now. So over here, we have had a little movement from the Dreadnought and the remaining Centurion here, trying to head to this objective here. However, um, there is a hell of a lot of Terminators here, which I'm not quite sure we're going to be able to chew through in time. So I have a suspicion that objective might be lost, but we're going to really try hard. Um, up here, we've got this squad that stayed put because it's sitting on the objective. We've backed out of combat with the Blood Letters here. Um, Grimaldus has got back in the land raider to try and give him a bit of protection. So hopefully we can pass some shots into these guys here and uh, pick up uh, a few more kills. Over to this side of the board. Um, the remaining Terminators have worked their way around here to deal with the Raptors and possibly the Vulture if they're lucky. Uh, with a little backup from the um, Chaplain and the Gravas Captain. However, there's still a Demon Prince roaming over here and I haven't got a lot of stuff that can really see it. So it could be interesting to try and deal with it. We'll, we'll see if we can manage it because I have backed this land raider out of combat so he cannot shoot. Um, the land speeder stays still and the two terminators remaining over there have made it an advance towards the fortress redemption to try and tie up those blood letters which might be suicidal but it's the last throw of the dice. So here we go let's go into shooting turn five templars. So as the templars end their shooting phase in turn five um, we had a lot of shots fire into the Raptors down here, but didn't do much at all. Uh, however, the... <laughs> I don't know how this has happened at all. He took quite a lot of firepower and he's on one wound. Um, and it came down to the Cyclone Missile Launcher over here firing at him. Oh, she got a wound on him and he only had to roll three for damage and he rolled a two. So he's now sitting there laughing um, because not much else. I had nothing else I could do with him, really. So, <laughs> boo to you. <laughs> Um, moving over to the centre of the board here, we ha didn't have much shooting happen here because most of it was kind of locked in combat, but there was a lot of long range shooting from here and here over at the blood letters that were up there on that platform, but they are now dead. The LAS cannons here shot over into the uh, Terminator squad, managing to kill, I think it was one in the end, so nothing too special there. Then we backed, obviously we backed out of combat over here, all the bolt was fired into the blood letters and Araka, 
Iraq is on two wounds and the bloodletters are down to, I think it's five men there. We then did to try to soften up this Coulter squad here, which we did do, he's down to one, but we've still got so many nasties to deal with down here, I don't really see what I'm going to do about it. But we'll, uh, we'll proceed into the combat phase now and see what happens. So as the Templars end their fifth turn, um, we have over here the combat that uh, went on for a bit over here, which is the um, Centurion that charged in and managed to do nothing. And then also he got hit by the Demon Prince and saved six saves of four plus. Pretty impressive. Uh, the Exalted Champion here um, is only uh, in combat due to a follow-up. I managed to do four wounds to my Dreadnought after it went through a cultist. Uh, I think through is probably the adequate word because it did about six wounds to it. Um, uh, the, Terminators, <laughs> yeah, the Terminators managed to destroy the Land Raider and it didn't blow up. They very tentatively picked the tracks off to make it not blow up. Um, so that's everything over this side of the board. I have it in the middle. Obviously, you can see the blood letters have all been destroyed, and also the Dreadnought managed to finish off Araka, and that got us another HQ kill point. Um, moving over to this side of the board, um, we did try to get the Vulture. Um, however, he managed to kill two Terminators <laughs> and didn't take any wounds either, I don't think, so not brilliant. However, we did manage to finish the Raptors off. There is this guy here, and this guy here, and then obviously there's two HQs here as well, so this could be a bone of contention for next turn, possibly. We shall see. Um, other than that, in the middle, um, I think oh, ended up with, <laughs> ended with the, uh, two, well, I think it was, uh, yeah, I think we won that combat, but it didn't it really, it was on one wound, exactly, so it's not brilliant either way. <laughs> so um, that is the end of Templar's turn five. So now we're going to head into the last turn, which is belongs to the Werebearers. Right, turn five movement for the forces of chaos, the 83rd. So the great demon of corn is pushing up over here now. The vulture has peered behind the chaplain and the captain there, possibly trying a sneaky little shot. Terminator is edging forward slightly to put some supporting fire in for the vulture. Um, core kid, of course, is supporting that action. And over here, Sir Karen has moved up. Supported by the Chaos Lord once again and a Sorcerer. We're going to try a sneaky shot at the Terminator. Um, let's see if that works. Down here we have the Blood Letters coming up the centre. Uh, the Herald there is just holding on to that objective on the centre of the battlefield. Down here the Warp Smith has moved up. We have also got Zufa, the Impaler, is moving up the centre here. He's going to support the uh, other HQ elements that are there. Um, if the game continued, we would be in some serious trouble. Um, but these guys are going to try and join in and aid them. This squad here has moved up as well, the Terminators across here. And the two Sorcerers are still moving up the battlefield. So it's been quite a lot of movement here. It's the last chance the Chaos Forces have got to pull some victory points out of the bag. So let's move on to turn five, Psychic and Shooting. Right, end of turn five shooting and psychic for chaos. So we got off a warp time on the Scarin, which then got it into a good firing position to come down here and kill off the last Terminator. So we can try an optimistic charge into the chaplain there. Uh, we tried to overcharge a plasma pistol into the captain on that one there, oh, chaplain, into the captain there. Uh, unfortunately, it hit, wounded, but an invulnerable save protected him. Um, let's move across the battlefield. There wasn't too much shooting, to be fair. Um, Skull Cannon fired once again into the Vindicator to return fire after it's been shot at before and ripped two wounds off there. Melter Gun fired as well, nothing. Um, we did try a smite which periled and the sorcerer um, from the Thousand Suns killed himself and a warp time over here that didn't pay off either. So that is it. No more shooting. Time to assault and see if we can finish this once and for all. Right, turn five, assault at the end of the game here. So, down here, the Terminator is charged in and uh, killed off the Dreadnought with a chain fist. Um, down here, the Dark Apostle charged in, hit the chap, hit the uh, Centurion a bit, didn't do anything. So it's down to the Demon Prince to then just shred the Centurion. And now they are sitting happily on that objective. And finally, the only other bits of combat, the big bits of combat that happened across the battlefield. We had the Bloodburster attempt a charge. Unfortunately, he fluffed it and didn't get in. But the Vulture got into combat with the Chaplain, killed the Chaplain, and then the Heroic Intervention killed the Vulture from the Captain there. 
Um, so yeah, that was it. And finally, the last remaining word, Vera Marine here, <laughs> fell to the lieutenant's power sword. Um, so he remains on one wound, just about keeping his honour. So that is it, guys. That is the end of the battle after five turns. We're going to have a quick add up of the scores and come back with the final result. Right, so we have finished. The bolters are going silent now. Everyone is now leaving the battlefield. So after five turns of pure chaos and Imperium forces clashing with one another, 10,000 points to 20,000 points on the battlefield. Many special characters, different legions, Black Templars standing strong. The final result is duh, 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 Black Templars, 15. Chaos forces led by the uh, 83rd, 15 victory points. It is a draw. Oh. Good. Dear, oh dear. Second time now in a row that these apocalyptic games between the Imperium and Chaos Forces, myself and Tom, have been in a draw. So this is the third game. Tom has run, won the very first game, and these two are now draws. So, just so, uh, just proof, here's our final scores. So you've got the Warlord kill at the top there. You then have HQ kills, super heavy kills, and objectives at the bottom. So I've scored 10 because I'm holding both of the points in the middle and my home ones, and Tom's just holding his two home ones there. So yeah, 15 victory points each. What a shame. Yeah. But it's been a really fun game. It's been some really epic moments. The battlefield has looked amazing. Good back and forth as well. Look, yeah, some good back and forth. And uh, yeah, it's, it could have kept going for a while. Um, some really good moments. Tom, do you have a unit of the match? That's actually quite a tough one. But I think... I think it'll be this chap here, actually. Big boy at the back there. He's done a there. lot of damage around the field, and he's literally just been quite a rock back here. Yeah. So I can't, and the, the flamer stuff is pretty awesome, so yeah. It's yeah, he's done... Uh, no, no one else has really done as much as he has in the game, anyway, let's put that yeah. way, so, yeah. uh, For me, it will probably be... Uh, probably actually just a Karen. It's kind of sat happily at the back and just kept popping things and kind of moving around towards the end there. If it wasn't for that Terminator, um, we probably could have done something. But uh, yeah, no, it's been a really good game. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't already, give us a like and a subscribe and uh, we will give you plenty more battle reports. So this is Dom and Tom from Black Tide Studios. Thank you very much for viewing and take care. <laughs>